Well, Coach, you've had great players before. You've had great teams, but the challenge you faced this year is, uh, on paper, looks like nothing can go wrong. What's your biggest concern? Uh, you know, again, on paper, it looks good, but uh, our two biggest concerns right now are the Oklahoma City Thunder and the Miami Heat. Those guys are the NBA Western Conference champs and NBA champs, respectively. So uh, you got to give credit where credit's due. There's a lot of things that can go wrong, obviously. Uh, you look at the Miami Heat that did this two couple of years ago, and they didn't accomplish their goals that first year. You look at the Lakers back in 04, adding uh, Gary Payton and Carl Malone to uh, uh, Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant in their prime, and, and they didn't get lucky because you need luck, and with Carl getting hurt uh, in the finals or down the stretch. So uh, there are a lot of things that can go wrong. We just have, have to make sure that we continue to focus on the process and grind it out every day so that we accomplish our journey in the right fashion. How do you mesh all these individual talents together into one cohesive unit? Well, the good part about it is we brought in good people. So it starts with the individuals uh, in terms of them being good people that will be willing to sacrifice a little bit, not pulling back in their games, but sacrifice a little bit when it comes to scoring the basketball or doing certain things with the basketball for the betterment of the team. And everybody that we have is a good person. Everybody that we have wants to attain the one goal or one thing that we have uh, going for us is win a championship. So now what that does for me, it makes it my job that much easier. All I have to do is put them in the right spots on the floor and let them know the right things that they need to do on both ends of the floor in order to accomplish it. Dwight Howard is a great person, but we've seen it could be high maintenance. You can just ask Stan Van Gundy. What have you learned after coaching LeBron and Kobe that maybe helps you when dealing with an eagle like that? Well, you know what? I'm high maintenance, too. At least if you ask my wife, she might say so, because I don't do the dishes. <laughs> but, 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 you know, having Dwight's a good thing. In order to be great, I think you have to have uh, an ego or you have to have a confidence in yourself that's higher than most other people's. But also in the same breath, knowing that if you have a chance to win and win big, that you'll sacrifice a little bit for the betterment of the team. And I don't think Dwight nor anybody else we have on this roster will, will have a problem doing that. With the addition of Eddie Jordan, people are talking about a Princeton offense. Uh, are you really going to run a, quote, Princeton-type offense with all this talent? Uh, we, sort of. It, you know, it will, we will do some of the things that we did last year, mess with some Princeton stuff, and, and mess with some things that I think will benefit Steve, uh, Steve Nash. At the end of the day, when Steve Nash is bringing the ball up the floor, he's going to have an opportunity to, to decide what we want to do, including the opportunity to play pick and roll every time down the floor. So uh, it, it won't be quote unquote the Princeton type of offense that everybody has been talking about with the addition of Eddie, but there will be some aspects of it that will that will get us moving the right way, get the floor space the correct way so we can take advantage of the intelligent guys we have on this team. In Miami, you made that reference. The question was, who doesn't get the ball at the end of the game? Who gets the ball here and whose team is this? Well, Kobe gets the ball at the end of the game. I mean, he's been in that situation uh, for a lot of uh, different times, and he's come through. But having said that, you know, there are teams that are going to take Kobe away. I know when we played, when we used to play against Kobe, we felt any time he touched the ball, at minimum, we were running a second guy at him. Before we did that, we tried to deny him from catching the ball. And so that's going to happen. And we, uh, we feel good because we have other guys that – are capable of stepping up and making big plays in pressure situations. So uh, Kobe will probably be the first option. And then uh, we got a lot of great second options also.